All right, so we can get started by deleting the default cube by pressing the X key on our keyboard and just pressing delete. And then what I'll do to create the main shape of the watch, we can press shift A, go to mesh and add in a cylinder. Now, before you start uh, messing around with the cylinder or doing anything, we should go to this bottom tab here and change the vertices from 32 to 60. Uh, for me, uh, this is the best way of creating the watch. It adds a lot of symmetry and it helps us to have enough vertices to play with just so that we have everything there. So make sure to turn this to 60. Now we can tab into edit mode and when we tab into edit mode, that panel is gone. So just make sure that uh, you don't touch anything before you change the vertices. Anyway, what we can do is just press S and Z to scale it down on the Z axis like so. And maybe just scale up everything by pressing S to scale just so that our watch is bigger. And the first thing that we're going to do is create, I guess, just the main shape by extruding out this top vertex here. And then we can press S to scale. And then we can do it with the bottom as well. So I've just selected this bottom face here and then I can press E, extrude it a bit less than this top part here, and then press S to scale, like so. Maybe even bring it back up, just so that it's not coming out too much. And now what we can do is select the, um, the little parts where the strap is attached to. So I will go into front view, and then tab into edit mode. And we want things to be a bit symmetrical. Uh, we could use mirror modifiers or we could there's probably many ways to do this. However, I think we should just do it manually by just counting the vertices and seeing if it looks good. So the best way that I found to do this is to count three vertices or three faces from the middle. So one, whoops, one, two, three, four, and then select the next four. So one and then shift select two, three, and four. We'll do the same on this side. So one, two, three, four, and then select one, two, three, and four. Okay, and now we need to do it for the back vertices. So I was doing it at front view, and now I will go to back view and just do the exact same thing. So one, two, three, four. Make sure you're holding the shift key and then press one, two, three, and four. And then last time, one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, and four. Now, if I go into top view, uh, we can actually see that we have things uh, quite symmetrical just from the way that we counted things. And now what we can do to extrude these little parts is to press E and then right click and then press S and Y to scale out on the Y axis. And as you can see, it's pulling the uh, these parts out like so. So I'll go into solid view and just tab out of the mode to see how that looks. I think that looks pretty good and that's exactly what I'm going for. So what I can do is alt click this edge loop here or this edge here and then shift alt click this edge here and then do the same for the other two. So shift alt click and shift alt click so that we have all of these four parts uh, selected. And then what I will do is press G and Z and bring it down like so, just so that we have a bit of a slant. I think that's a better look to the watch. Adds a nice bit of design flair. Cool. Uh, what I think I'll do is just add in another edge loop just so that we have some separation between the slant and the, um, I'll say the rest of the watch. So what I can do is press control R, add in an edge loop and bring it down to about here. And then I will zoom in and just press S to scale until things are pretty much vertical, like so. Great. So now what we can do is move on to, I guess just creating more parts of the watch. So we can select this part here, and then this will be where I guess the watch face is. And there's a lot of ways that you can actually uh, do this. So what I like to do is press E to extrude up a little bit. And then we want to inset this face, so make a face within a face. So the way to do that is to press the I key to inset uh, and bring it in like so. I think to about here is good. And then what I like to do is press G and Z to bring it up on the Z axis. Not too much, but you know, just slightly like so. Press I to inset once more, and then we can press E and extrude it downwards. So that is our watch uh, face, I would say. And if we want to change the thickness of this part here, all you need to do is 
Alt right click this face loop here and then press S to scale. However, we don't want it scaling on the Z axis, getting progressively like uh, thinner as it goes. We don't want the slant. We want to press S and Shift Z so that the uh, the height of this face is uh, remaining the same. So I just press S, Shift Z to scale down that part. And also what I can do is Alt click this edge loop here and press, whoops, not F. I'll just press Control Z. I'll press G and Z to bring it down like so. So we have this up and then down slant here. So we'll leave the uh, top of the watch face for now, and we'll move on to creating the uh, watch strap or the bracelet, whatever you want to call it. And um, yeah, so we can just do that now. So tab into edit mode, and what we can do is press Shift A and add in a cube. But actually, let me not do that. I think it's better to do it in face or in uh, object mode as a separate object. You'll see why in a minute. But I've just added a cube, I'll go into top view and then move it to this corner here. And to make things a lot easier for us, it's a good idea to use modifiers. Uh, if you don't know what modifiers are, they're just many, uh, they're, they're types of tricks that you can use in Blender to help you speed up your workflow. So one uh, modifier that we can use is the, is the mirror modifier. And this means that our object will be reflected on uh, a mirroring axis. So we can do this by going to the modifiers panel here which is this wrench icon, add modifier, and add in a mirror modifier. Now we won't be able to see anything because the mirror point is around the, uh, the origin of our object. So we can only see it if we uh, go into to edit mode. However, uh, what we actually want to do is mirror it around this object here. So we can just click this eyedropper tool and select our cylinder or our watch body. And now our cube is being mirrored around our watch. And I also want it to be mirrored around this part here. So I could enable the Y as well. And then we have all four parts of our watch strap uh, being worked on at the same time. However, for now, I think it's okay if we just focus on this side here. So what I can do is tab into edit mode, scale things down, and then move things to about here. And then we will just slide it into our object until we get a shape that kind of resembles this part here. So what I'll do is tab into edit mode and then press S and Z to scale it down quite a lot. I'll press G and Z to bring it down like so. And then just change the, uh, the width as well by pressing S and X to scale on the X axis. And then just move it out like so. So what I can do is just go into X-ray mode by pressing Alt Z, and then I can just select this edge here and press G and Z to bring it up, just so that we have a similar slant at the start of our uh, watch strap here. This is the type of watch strap that is more like a bracelet, uh, many different individual pieces. And I think this is my favorite part of the watch because it incorporates many different modifiers in a very simple way, but it produces a really cool effect. So we've just made this little part of the watch strap, and now we just need the middle section. So what I can do is press Shift A, add in a cube, but again, actually, I'm going to add it in uh, with this object here. So tab into edit mode first, press Shift A, and add in a cube. And then this time, we're going to make sure that clipping is enabled. And if you don't know what clipping is, clipping just means that the object when the object is centered or any vertices in the middle will be merged together. So if I put the cubes in the center, you can see I can pull them apart. However, with clipping enabled, when I pull them apart, they're not really being pulled apart because these middle vertices are sealed together. So this is what we want. And what I'll do is just move it to here. Ooh, just press S and Z to scale down until we get a shape that is like a flat rectangle. And then what we can do is just press S and Z until it matches uh, this part here of the watch strap. Go into top view, tab into edit mode, and then press Alt Z for x-ray mode. And you can see that this uh, vertex are going way too deep into the watch. So I'll press G and Y 
and bring it out until there's some noticeable separation between the watch body and uh, these first parts of the watch strap. And then I will press G and move it like so. All right, that looks pretty good. And then the next part that we need to add is just the, uh, the secondary part of the watch strap. So this was the very first part, and then we'll add a second part, and then that second part will be repeated for the entirety of the bracelet. Hopefully that made sense, but you'll see how it will work in a minute. So what we can do is actually, uh, I've changed my mind a little bit. I think it would be better to separate this object here from the main uh, body. So what we can do is press P. So press L once you so, uh, to select this middle part here, and then press P selection so that we have a uh, completely separate object and then tab into edit mode and then what we can do is press shift a to add in a cube as you can see our cube is in the center so first of all we need to disable clipping for a moment just so that our cube can come back or come separately and then we can enable it back once again we'll press s to scale down and then move it to about here. Go into right view, and then once again, scale down until we get that flat rectangular shape. And then make sure it's pretty much touching the uh, the middle part. If it touches, that's fine. Uh, but also make sure that there is uh, some separation between um, this first part here and the second part. And then also make sure that the width is similar. So when we select the vertices in Blender, uh, if we select the top vertices or the top vertices like so, and then press G, you can see that uh, we haven't actually selected the vertices at the bottom. So if I just go into top view, that's why I always enable X-ray mode or wireframe mode. So I press Alt Z, then box select by holding down my left mouse button. And as you can see, these bottom vertices have been selected. So I'll press G and X, oops, X to pull it in like so. And there we go. So we've made part of the link. And then I will press G and Y to pull out. And I can do the same with this part here. Bring it out to, whoops, to about the middle of this, uh, this face here. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's not exact or perfect. Um, it can always be amended. And to add a bit more of a uh, interesting design to our object, to uh, these links here, what I like to do is press Control R on uh, this part here, and then scroll up on my mouse wheel until I have about five uh, edge loops. It needs to be an odd number, so I think five is good. You could go seven, uh, nine, eleven, you know, so on and so forth. But just so that we have this middle edge here to manipulate. And what I like to do is first enable the uh, proportional editing up here. So proportional editing is just a feature where you can move multiple multiple vertices at once using a circle of influence, as you can see here. If I scroll down on my mouse wheel, the circle of influence decreases. However, if I scroll up, you can see that more vertices are being pulled along with it. Um, so that's how it works. And this is going to be very useful for what we're doing. So our objective is to have a nice curve to uh, this watch piece. So we want it to go round like this little hump. However, we want the bottom part to still remain flat. So the way that we can do this is, um, hold on, I need to uh, erase my drawing. Uh, so the way that we can do this is by using proportional editing only on the top part of our object. So uh, what I can do is select this vertex here. Well, first of all, actually, what we need to do is hide these bottom faces here, just so that they're not being affected by our proportional editing. So select this face here, control click this face here, and then press H to hide. I'll do the same for this face loop here. Alt click this face loop here, and then press H to hide. Now we only have this top strip of faces. Then select this edge here with edge select. So by pressing two on your keyboard or going up here, you can enable edge select. And then the final thing we need to do is go to our proportional editing tab and change the fall off from smooth to sphere because that gives us our more rounded effect. Mm -hmm. 